Hello everybody! This is part two of my anticipated 2017 releases, the Tor.com novella edition. I decided to make a separate video on this because there are eight of these in just the first six months of 2017 that I am really looking forward to. The first one I have already read, and I'm going to read the title of it because I can never remember the correct sequence. It is Dusk or Dark or Dawn or Day by Sean and McGuire coming out on January 10th. This is about Jenna, who is a ghost. She died too soon. And in this world, ghosts who die too soon have a time debt and they have to leech time, take time away from living people so that they can eventually pay that time debt and move on. Jenna earns the time that she leeches from people by working for a suicide prevention hotline. And then a mysterious thing starts happening to all the ghosts in New York City, threatening their existence. And she is the only person who can stand in the way. Since I have already read this novella, I'll give some quick thoughts on it. I thought it was a really good story. I'm not really into supernatural or ghost stories, but this one was very intriguing. It was well written, and I really liked the idea of the time debt and how that was used in the story. I do think that it wasn't quite as engaging a story and ending as Every Heart a Doorway, which is the only other thing I've read by Shauna McGuire, but it was still an excellent standalone story. On January 24th, Passing Strange by Ellen Clages is coming out. This is set in San Francisco in 1940, and it's a haven for the unconventional. And the rest of the description says that six women find their lives as tangled with each other's as they are with the city they call home. They discover love and danger on the borders where mystery, science, and art intersect. And it's inspired by the pulps, film noir, and screwball comedy. What really attracted me to this novella is the cover art. For some reason, I thought this novella had a queer angle to it. I don't know if it actually does or not, but I'm gonna give it a try. And on January 31st, probably one of the most anticipated novellas is Binti Home by Nettie Okorafor. I've already read an arc of this and I wrote a review a little earlier than I was supposed to, but I will link that if you want to know more about it. It is the sequel to Binti, which came out in 2015 and which won the Hugo Award. Home takes place a year after Binti enrolled in Umza University and she has to go back to Earth to face her family and her elders and her alien friend Okwu comes with her. I think this is quite a middle story story in a longer tale about Binti, and it continues her kind of search of uncovering her real identity and coming of age in some way. So I didn't think it was as fantastic as Binti was, but it still meets my pretty high standards for this story. On February 7th, one of my kind of guilty pleasures, Idle Ingredients by Matt Wallace is coming out. This is the fourth novella in the Scene Du Jour series about a catering company that works with the supernatural community. I call this kind of a guilty pleasure in as non-derogatory a term as I can possibly make it because I think these are really good stories, but not my typical fare because this is supernatural urban fantasy with a ton of humor. It's kind of dirty, kind of gross, and there's a lot of chaotic, amusing violence. I have read and reviewed the first three novellas, so I will link my written reviews for those. And mad props to Matt Wallace for making me like his sense of humor because I was initially very skeptical about that aspect, but really, if you want some really funny fantasy, which is rare, you should pick up these novellas. They are really, really good. Good characters, fun stories, easy to read in just an evening. And I think that Wallace is really good at writing female characters. In March, there is a fantasy novella from Emma Newman called Brothers Ruin. And I think like a lot of the Tor.com novellas coming out right now, this is part of a longer novella series, but I don't think it has anything to do with her other fantasy series, The Split Worlds. It does seem kind of similar though. The description says that the year is 1850 and Great Britain is flourishing thanks to the Royal Society of the Esoteric Arts. When a new mage is discovered, royal society elites descend like buzzards to snatch up a new apprentice. But Archie Gunn isn't a talented mage. His sister Charlotte is, and to prevent her brother from being imprisoned for false reporting, she combines her powers with his to make him seem a better prospect. 
Then she discovers a nefarious plot that she has to avert with her skills. I think that I'm more attracted to Newman's science fiction series, the Planetfall universe, than to her fantasy, but I have enjoyed the first two books in the Split World series, and I expect that Brothers Ruin is going to be her at the top of her game. In April, there will be Proof of Concept by Gwyneth Jones, who is one of those UK British authors that I think is never published in the United States for whatever reason. I heard her name a couple of years ago and thought I really should read something by her, but her stuff isn't available here in the US. So I'm really excited that we have a US published novella from her that I can try out. And the concept of this novella sounds exactly what I like to read. On a desperately overcrowded future Earth crippled by climate change, the most unlikely hope is better than none. Governments turn to big science to provide them with the dreams that will keep the masses compliant. The Needle is one such dream, an installation where the most abstruse theoretical science is being tested. Science that might make human travel to a habitable exoplanet feasible. Kier is thrilled to be invited to join the team, even though she knows it's only because her brain is host to a quantum artificial intelligence named Altair, but Altair knows something he can't tell. This just checks off all the boxes. We have climate change, big science, possible exoplanet colonization, and quantum artificial intelligence. I am there for all of these things. And of course, the final one I have to mention is Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Sean and McGuire. This is the second novella in the Wayward Children series. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called now. Not a sequel to Every Heart a Doorway, but it is the backstory of the twin sisters Jack and Jill who are introduced in that. And if you don't know what this series of novellas is about, it's about children and teens who went through portals into other fantasy worlds, and when they were booted back into the real world, they were very disappointed and they don't really belong anymore. I loved Every Heart a Doorway, just was talked about in that novella, really struck me. And I'm hoping that the story of Jack and Jill will do something similar, though they weren't my favorite characters from that novella. We will see. I expect it will still be really, really good. If you happen to know of any other short stories, novelettes, or novellas from other sources that are coming out in 2017, please let me know. I don't know where to find out that information, actually. I don't think that a lot of short fiction is publicized and marketed in advance, like Tor.com does with their novellas, which makes it difficult for people like me who really want to know about things in advance. As always, thank you guys very much for watching, and I will talk to you again soon.